So thank you again to the both of you for joining us for this exclusive conversation with Backstage. So excited to, to have your ears for a little while. Um, obviously what brings us together today is your stellar work in your respective series this year, The Morning Show, which uh, just had its second season this year, and The White Lotus. Um, but 2021 also marks a special anniversary for you two, um, as the 20th anniversary has come around for Legally Blonde, which of course you two worked on 20 years ago now. Um, considering that we're backstage and we like those early career stories, before we bring, it, bring everyone up to present day, I'd love to hear what you remember about that audition process for Legally Blonde and um, just what the, the, the whole thing was like. It's my understanding, Reese, that the studio maybe didn't initially want you because of your track record with election is that right T tell us that story uh yeah i think the, the feedback i got when the producer mark platt was saying oh no we really want you to do it but the studio isn't sure so um they had seen me in election and they thought i was sort of like this know-it-all little <laughs> um nerd i guess um and that definitely they were like well can she be funny can she be sexy like you, I was like oh god I don't know but um I remember I had to dress up in like the full outfit and I had to go to MGM and meet everybody there and um, pretend to be the character and um it was really fun and nerve-wracking and scary but um I ended up getting the job which was changed my entire life yeah to say the least to say the least and Jennifer I, I feel like I couldn't picture anyone but you playing this role of Paulette, um, but it's also so distinctively you. So I'm curious what the character looked like on the page and uh, did what was the process of kind of putting your own spin on it for the audition? Um, I think they, I, you know, I'm just guessing what they were looking for. I mean, I think I could have gone to some other girls, except I think I was the, I was one of the few that like, came in for the audition you know and I think there were some um I heard there was like Courtney Love and uh Kathy Najimi and a couple other people that I think it was like they those were offers to them I think or something or they were they put it out I thought there was that's what I heard I heard there was some sort of like there were offers out or something like that but then I came in or something and auditioned or whatever and maybe gave a, a weirder take or whatever you know I think also like um I, I had done this sort of piece at the Groundlings and it was about this sort of loser girl that um, went out on a date with a guy and then um, uh, she leaves a message on his machine and then she starts, uh, you know, hyperventilating and, and trying to undo the message she, she wants to see more hard to get. And I think I think they showed that to the director too, to uh, Robert Luketic or something. But uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes you don't really know. Like, I'm sure, um, I'm sure there were some really good people that um, were right for this. But <laughs> I just got lucky. I, you know, I don't know, maybe timing or like, uh, you know, just sometimes like people are tired that day and they're like, let's just cast it. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that I got that job and whatever the magic was from above or whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled I got it. But yeah, I do think that um, there were some girls where it was just offers out to them. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think uh, it's safe to say that you, you can't, credit one of the the larger early successes in your career to people being tired on the other side of the table I think you had something special to say the least I don't um, think they were tired <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I think you were that good yeah yeah uh, thank you thank you for stepping in there yeah. um <laughs> kind of with that in mind uh again for for those early career folks and I know Reese you're obviously involved to an extent in the casting process with your own production company now What's your number one piece of audition advice that you, both of you have kind of gained over the years? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I just kind of, I really say to young people who are auditioning, just go in with confidence, just even if you're making a choice and make a choice. And I think like to speak to Jennifer, what I really, working with her was such a, a really informative comedy experience because 
you're, I, you know, you know that I don't know. I'm like, I'm not illuminating anything, but she has like, she'll have a bizarre idea and it just works because she commits to it. So whatever choice you make, just commit, you know, because acting is in comedy is really commitment. I mean, you just have to make a weird choice and just be confident about it. I don't know. What would you say, Jen? Well, yeah, you know what I don't like, and this used to happen to me all the time, and I never had the guts to say anything to anybody, but like, you know, you'd see like your competition in the room when you got there, there'd be like, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 girls that, you know, all look like they could be, you know, the part. But what I didn't like was that right before I would go in, someone would like start a conversation with me. Like, oh my God, you know, I, I had those shoes when I was growing up. I had the, like, all of a sudden you get, and I get, what would happen? I'd get in the conversation and then I would walk into the room and I would just, I would have no idea where I was, who I was supposed to be. And you really have to like, you have to go hide somewhere and, and not engage with the girls in the waiting room because otherwise, you know, you're, I mean, I had someone like come in, come into me. I was right before I went into a room. It, I'll never forget this audition. And I felt like I had a pretty good chance of getting it. And then this guy comes, walks in, and he goes, Jennifer, don't you remember me? I was going to be your agent a long time ago, but then I don't know what agency you went with, but and he got in this conversation. And the next thing I know, they're like, Jennifer, come in. And I went in and I just stood there and stared at everybody. And um, I just blew it. I, I mean, I had nothing to say. I couldn't remember who I was. So yeah, I say go hide somewhere until they call your name. And the other thing I think is really Jen, important. They, Jen, they don't do waiting room auditions anymore. Everybody just self tapes now. Oh, they do? You can hide in your room. Perfect. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to worry about the other girl sabotaging you with conversation. Oh my God. I don't, you know, I don't even think it was sabotage. They would just, some, you know, everyone was nervous and they wanted to, I don't even think it was sabotage, but I would always get engaged. And I was like, well, I've had these shoes for, I don't know how long. And I get in the conversation and they're like, Jennifer. And then I'm like, oh my God, who am I? Where am I? I blew a lot of things that way, but I, I forget. You're right. People are self-taping. I don't even know how to do that. Well, you don't you don't have to worry about it now. To say that. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. I, I do think it's fascinating to to look. I, I speak with actors all the time, uh, given my position at backstage, and it's always so fascinating to know kind of the roots of their career, where they got their training. The two of you are about as opposite as you can be. I mean, Reese, you you went to an open call as a teenager and kind of got your breakout role that way. Jennifer, you you went and studied drama at, at, through higher education. Um, I'd love to hear a bit more about, for, for lack of a better phrase, your process when it comes to that. Are you leaning on certain techniques, any certain training things? Um, Reese, we'll start with you, but then see, see if we can get a conversation going, a compare and contrast. H how do you kind of find your way in? Well, I, I mean, other than a handful of tiny acting classes, I have no technique. <laughs> And it's hard sometimes. I, I really am envious sometimes of other actors who have a whole method or a philosophy around it or a process. My process is very like homemade. <laughs> it's like um, cooked in the kitchen, accent work, all of that stuff. And it's very private and very interior to me. So I, I don't even know, I wouldn't even know how to articulate it to people a lot of the times. It's sometimes it's hard for me to talk to directors because I um, it's very private for me, but I, I'm getting better as I'm getting older. I'm like, I should probably tell them what I'm about to do next, so. And in terms of that privacy, I, I do, I guess I'm not altogether surprised that you don't wanna give up your secrets in that way. Once you say it out loud, it's kind of showing all your cards. So that makes sense. Well, J Jennifer, any anything that you would add to that? I mean, you have, such a I rich wanna, comedy do, career, but I do, yeah, go ahead. I do want to uh, say that what it was like doing um, Legally Blonde one with Reese. Uh, Reese, you were so locked in to being out. Like it was, uh, you, there was no way that, I, mean, I felt like I could have set you on fire and you would have still stayed the same. I mean, Here. it's really weird. When you get locked in, you just like, you know, you're in, you're, you're in the zone. And um, there's just no, you just can't penetrate it. 
you're just, I mean, you, you, uh, you're in, you're in. I, 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 I that blew, blew me away, actually. Yeah, but well, we, we were like, I mean, that was 21 years ago. I was super serious. I mean, uh, do you remember how serious I was, Jen? I was like, focused and serious. And I never, like, I didn't break character because I think I was terrified. That, I, you never looked terrified, ever. And, and is, is that, would you chalk that up to you being 22, 23, filming a giant studio film? Like, you, you didn't want to mess it up, so you're going to stick in character and be very serious about it. Yeah, and I've been on movies where they fired people after a week of shooting. I, I, I was on a movie, uh, maybe the movie that I did right before, and they fired one of the three leads. And I was like, oh, shit, you can get fired? I better like, so it, I was just very serious and I really took my job seriously and I really needed the job. I was, a, I was a mom and I had a little baby and I was like, I need the job really bad. Um, so I just really dialed in and very focused. And it, it sounds like you're indicating that that was the past, like you might've loosened up over the years. You think that's fair to say or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I'm more relaxed. Yeah. It took years of therapy though <laughs> to relax and let go. I was like, okay, all right. It took me, it took me like seven years of therapy to relax. We, we all need it. So th that's, that's very relatable. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, J Jennifer, in, in terms of your training, you obviously have such a rich comedy career. Um, so I was a little surprised to see that you also have a robust training background in the dramatic arts. Um, what can you tell us about the marriage of those two? And do you feel like you're pulling on that dramatic training in something like a Christopher Guest improvised film? What, what's kind of the balance between that? Well, you know, I do think, um, uh, you know, I wasn't, I was doing the dramatic thing. You know, I wanted to be a dramatic actress. It never occurred to me to do the comedy thing until I was in a, a, a Julie Bavasso, this great character actress, had this great class in New York City and I was in it and there was this guy in the class and he was watching me imitate everybody after class was over. We'd go out to dinner afterwards and I would imitate, you know, there was one girl that cried really hard every time and it didn't matter what scene she was in, she'd just cry. And I was doing sort of imitations of people. And, he said, and then this guy, John, just leaned over and he goes, you know what, you're in the wrong place, Jennifer. Like, I'm going to take you to a place next week and it's where you fit in, will really fit in. This isn't your place. And he took me to the, you know, it was called Gotham City at the time. It was the, it was the New York Groundlings and, um, and it was sort of improv and all that comedy stuff. And I think, I think nothing would have happened, I think, if I had started off dramatically. It wasn't, you know, he was right. The sort of the comedy was a better fit, fit. And the other thing was I hadn't really lived you know, I mean, it really is easier to play dramatic roles when, you know, your mother has passed away and, you know, the, you know, you, you get a taste of life and some of life is, is, is you have some really rough experiences, then you can have stuff to draw from. I mean, when I was, you know, in my 20s, I mean, I had nothing to reach, you know, I was just, um, you know, sort of lost and didn't know what I was doing. And um, I think, yeah, the more depressing life gets the more you <laughs> the better actor you are <laughs> better actor you are yeah maybe I don't know I don't know it but um but it helps it helps to have some, some I help. think I think that's 100 percent true you have to have and also you have to like have space between work to live a life and experience things so that you bring a, re a real richness of experience to your work and travel and meet different kinds of people and particularly when you do comedy which I'm going to just raise my hand and say comedy is the hardest thing out there. Trying to figure out what's funny, dynamics with other actors, figure out what the director wants, land the joke. Physical comedy is a whole other thing. It's a whole spectrum of um, skills, I, I think. So, I mean, if you're good at it, I also think a lot of it is just innate. You're either funny or you're not. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know I was funny. What's that, honey? I thought you were hilarious in election, by the way. They knew you were funny. They knew you were funny just by your performance in election. They knew you were funny. 
You know what? I didn't know I was funny until I did this movie called Freeway. I had done only dramatic roles. And then I did this movie when I was 19. And I played this really intense, like little country girl character who, whose parents get killed and her mother goes to jail and she shoots Kiefer Sutherland, a whole thing. And I was in the most serious drama of my entire life. And then we went to Sundance and they screened the movie and everybody started laughing. Yeah, you were you were hilarious in that movie. <laughs> and I realized, oh, comedy is just deep commitment to character. That's all it is. And it's so funny that it took you seeing the audience's reaction to realize what movie you were in. <laughs> also, I did election and I didn't think I was funny in election. I was just playing the part. You know, and I, I think characters who lack self-awareness are just inherently funny. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. The audience gets to laugh at their behavior, but they don't see it themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And it's, it's great to hear kind of the background of your, your various processes and the character work that goes into it, because, I mean, it's no secret that the two of you are really del delivering some of the best performances of your career just in these last couple of years. Um, Jennifer, I'd love to speak about The White Lotus just a little bit, because I know that you have said that this was something that you were looking for, uh, this sort of character in Mike White. Uh, you have a relationship with him and he wrote it with you in mind. Uh, yeah. what, what, what does it feel like to find that something? It, it must be so gratifying and now to see the response to it. Um, so yeah, t t tell us about that journey with this character and just what it means at this point in your career. Well, it was just there, you know, Mike told me the story of how he had been trying to sell this, uh, you know, pitch this idea to HBO about, um, you know, it was, a, it was another character sort of like it and, and um, um, you know, it was called the Tears of St. Patsy, whatever, but he, he said, you know, I tried, Jennifer, I tried to I get them to go uh, HBO to go, but I think they 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 didn't want to do it or whatever. And so I mean, I didn't I didn't have any expectations of anything happening. You know, I, mean, I thought that was Mike's. You know, I was like, oh okay. And then when Mike called me up, you know, when we were you know during the pandemic and said, you know, remember I sort of mentioned there was that job about uh, that that story I wanted to tell all about the, the rich people on vacation, and I was like. Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah, whatever. And he goes, yeah. Well, guess what? It's uh, it just got the green light, and we're going. And um, and I want you to play uh, this part of Tanya. And I was just like, oh, okay. Oh yeah. And then you know, of course, uh, just wanted to wait till another time. I wanted to wait like three or four months until you know I lost some weight and whatever. But I I I I had I couldn't get out of it because. Uh, Mike sort of sensed I was trying to get out of it. And I had a girlfriend that was just, just, just rode me and said, you are an insane person and you're going to blow the, this great opportunity. And, um, and I did it. And I, you know, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe once I got into the role, how cool it was. I, and, and if you told me I was ever going to have a role like this, where it was someone, you know, really battling, you know, grief and never re able to recover from her mother's death and all that. I mean, if you told me I could have a, a part like that, just because I actually did, you know, lose my mother early and she had a very sad death and everything. So, so I never would have believed you. What a miracle. And then, you know, and then people really, you know, you know, latched on to, to White Lotus. So that that's even cooler. You know, people really liked it and, you know, everyone knows how brilliant Mike White is and, now they know even more, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and Reese, I, I think the morning show speaks for itself, but it, it really is a culmination of you p putting the work in. I mean, you're, you're such a multi-hyphenate as a producer and as the star of this series, of course, with Jennifer Aniston as well. Um, but you've also spoken pretty candidly in the past of hitting certain ruts in your career of kind of having this period where you weren't passionate about the work and you feel like the response was kind of reflective of that as well. So what advice do you have for kind of rolling with the punches and waiting for that something special to kind of lead to something like the morning show? Oh, well, can I just say, I just love like White Lotus. <laughs> I just 
just want to talk about why yeah, I love it. Yeah, let's say it. <laughs> I loved it so much. I just loved you in it, Jen. And I, I, there was so, it's such a rich comedic world too. Um, some of the lines are the greatest lines I've heard in so long. Um, and all the characters were so, uh, I don't know, just sort of deplorable, but lovable in the same way. <laughs> um, I just, and I just have, I can't let this whole Zoom go by without saying I loved you in this show. Um, my favorite scene was when you were throwing, this fantasy sequence of you throwing the ashes in the, in the water and it's like, like a Bo Derek moment. <laughs> and then the reality was you had this box on the back of a boat. <laughs> it's like uh, all those ashes. ashes. Um, <laughs> It's just really beautiful. But morning show, morning show is, is a, a, wow, what a wild ride. I had no idea what to expect when we started doing morning show. And I just was so excited to work with Jen. I'd never, we hadn't worked together since we did Friends a long, long time ago. And um, it just became perfect because the media landscape and what is journalism now? Like, where do you get the news and where is it accurate? And then you know, then we had all these secular, like kind of tailwinds helping pr motivate the project forward with, you know, seeing all the scandals and the sexual harassment suits inside of every single network, I think maybe except for one. Um, so it was perfect time to talk about women in the workplace. And it's just a joy to be there and get to say those amazing lines and work with those wonderful actors like Juliana Margulies and and, and, I, and I feel like, I mean, thematically, it perfectly aligns with um, what Hello Sunshine, what kind, kind of your, your ethos with your production company. Um, but of course, you're, you're interested in producing work for other actors and not, not, not just yourself. So, so I'm curious what kind of excites you as a producer? What are you looking to get your hands in when it comes to putting your name to it on the producing side of things? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited about next year. We have a lot of romance and a lot of comedy. And I think it's, I think people are pretty burned out on negativity and sad, sad movies and sad television shows and death and destruction. So we kind of double down on optimism, joy, and hope. Um, we have, you know, we have, oh, somebody is calling me. Oh, hi. Um, we have great shows next year. We have um, Zoe Saldana in a Netflix show that's so romantic and amazing. We have Where the Crawdads Sing with Daisy Edgar Jones coming out. We have Daisy Jones in the Six, which is love and sex and rock and roll in the 70s. And um, I just finished a comedy um, with Ashton Kutcher for Netflix. And I just, it was just fun to go to work and laugh um, and, and be joyful instead of, you know, crying every day. Um, so I think I'm really excited about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is the the drama of the morning show, does it get exhausting as a performer? Is it is it tiring? You know, it's a privilege to be able to play that range, you know, I, you know, I'm dealing with opioid addiction and sexism and racism and homophobia. And, but I, I will say like at the end of seven months of that or a year and a half of second season took a year and a half to shoot with all the shutdowns. Yeah, I was a little tired. I think <laughs> Jen and I got like, woo, that was a lot. It's like making three and four movies all in a row, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what an accomplishment though, truly. Um, and something else that you have coming down the pipeline in terms of uh, wanting to make people laugh is you do have Legally Blonde 3. And I, I just wanna pick both your brains for a moment. It, it's such a unique opportunity to revisit characters 20 years on. So what, what are you most looking forward to doing that and getting to work together again? Well, I'm dying to know, re, you know, Reese is the keeper of the keys and she knows <laughs> all the secrets. I know so little of what's happening with that. So I, I can't wait to hear what Reese has to say today. I wish I could take a poll of everybody watching to say like, what do you want to see us do? Right, <laughs> like, leave it in the comments and yeah. <laughs> I mean, just the idea of being anywhere with Jennifer would be like, the greatest and visiting characters 20 years later to see what's changed about them and what hasn't and 
I mean, the movie is such a, you know, a feminist movie too at the time about really that your life doesn't have to be defined by your romantic relationships. It can be defined by your girlfriends, by your sense of self-worth, by your job, your education, your accomplishments. So it's, it's interesting to visit characters 20 years later. Um, Mindy Kaling's writing it. They're yeah. in the process of it. It's a lot of me and this lady. That's all I have to say. No, you, hey, Reese, you know what's really funny? It's like um, sometimes I'll be at the airport or somewhere and whatever, people come up to me and they're like, oh, we love Legally Blonde. And then they'll always say to me, and we were both L for Halloween. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> they're always you for Halloween. Like, what about Paulette? What about Paulette? No. He had some iconic looks, but everybody shares the meme of, God, I want a hot dog so bad. <laughs> well, now I'll have to break out my Paulette costume for next Halloween. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you posted there, yeah. Um, well, as a final question for you two, thank you again so much for sharing your time with me this evening. Um, again, we're kind of taking the walk down memory lane. I, I would love to hear the piece of advice that you would give your younger self, that person who is just getting their start in this industry, um, something that would have been helpful for you to know back in the day that you've kind of learned in your journey. Oh. Jennifer, um, you, want, you want to start us off? Well, yeah, I mean, I'll say, you know, um, you know, your life is, doesn't really go quite the way, at least from my experience, it just didn't quite go the way I thought it was going to go. But I have to say, um, I'm not disappointed. I mean, if you hang in there, sometimes some cool stuff happens. And, you know, I just want to say one thing, you know, there's some really talented people that I worked with, you know, in, uh, in drama school, in college, whatever. I mean, some people that were really good, people way better than myself, but gave up after a certain amount of time, they just gave up because I think they thought maybe they lost, you know, they weren't going to have their shot. And, and they moved on to like, you know, being very sort of, you know, taking very normal jobs. And I just think, I think you have to hang in there. I think I just, I hung in there longer than other people that were, were better than I was. I think, um, I think the key is to hanging in there. I like it. I like it. Reese, how about you? What's, what's that one thing you tell your younger self? The things that you don't get, like those jobs you don't get or, or the odd auditions you didn't nail or those parts that you desperately wanted and you didn't get, they weren't for you. And it's better things are coming, better days are coming. As Jennifer said, you don't know what your life is looking at. It's less of a ladder. It's more like a jungle gym. So just, uh, there was even Marie saying, I was at this, this um, actor's uh, conference and she said the smartest thing. She goes, look, I've been at the front of the bus and I've been at the back of the bus. The most important thing is stay on the bus. And I thought that was beautifully said. Yeah, I like that. Very stay good. on the bus. Those are two really good images. The jungle gym, it's a jungle gym, not a ladder, oh. and then stay on the bus. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, this was such a pleasure. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Reese. Um, thank you very much. Much. Yes, you thank have a good you, rest of your Reese. evening and stay and thank well. Thank you everybody for watching. And Jen, I love you. I love you, Reese. I, I'll see you in, I, when I'm in your town. I'm coming soon. Please, please, please. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.